we have seen how to bias both nmos and pmos transistors at a given current and in the nmos case we have also seen the current mirror structure which can be used to realize a number of current sources starting from a single current source now we will look at a general uh, biasing structure that is commonly used in an integrated circuit to realize a number of uh, current sources of both polarities okay so first we will look at the pmos current mirror and as with nmos we start with a drain feedback structure where we connect a current source i not to the drain terminal of the pmos to sense the difference between id and i not and we know the usual stuff that id minus i not will flow into this capacitor and change the voltage and that voltage can be fed back to the gate of the transistor it will be in the correct direction to counter the difference between id and i not in other words it will be in negative feedback and now this vsg that vsg would be equal to the threshold voltage plus square root of 2 times i not divided by mu p c ox w by l okay so this is nothing but the current factor if you have a set of identical transistors usually you do have them on an integrated circuit because they are fabricated at the same time and they are very close to each other and they are likely to be at the same temperature okay if you replicate this vsg across another identical transistor i'll call this m0 and m1 and i'll write m1 equals m0 to mean that they are matched then as long as m1 is in saturation okay let me show something connected to the drain of m1 as long as this vd1 is such that m1 is in saturation this current will be equal to i not okay obviously here i have ignored the effect of uh, lambda if you do have lambda the current here will be slightly different from the current there depending on how different the drain voltage here is compared to the drain voltage there okay and it's not just one copy you can make a number of copies again i'll draw a line through the gate it simply means that it's connected to this gate and also it comes out here okay so you can have more transistors and more copies of i not and it doesn't have to be just i not so let's say all these transistors have a width w and a length l okay then they'll have a current i not and if you make a transistor of width nw and the length l it will have a current of n times i not so you can also have a multiple of the current that you started with so this is how you realize current sources of a variety of values now one practical uh, constraint which i won't elaborate here is that when you do have current mirrors and you want to realize different current values you change the width but you do keep the length of all transistors the same because this inverse proportionality to l is not exact okay it doesn't matter whether it is inversely proportional or has some other complicated dependence as long as they all have the same l if you have n times w you will get n times the current okay for all transistors you use same length okay now we have these currents but this is still not like a current source whose both terminals are accessible if both terminals are accessible if you want to pull current from a node you connect this if you want to push current into a node you connect that one okay whereas here this terminal is the supply voltage and it's not useful as a current source terminal only this terminal is useful so with pmos transistors you can only push current into a node but you already know that with nmos transistors you can pull currents out of a node so if you want both all you have to do is the following so let's say you take one of these copies let's say this is w by l so a current i not will flow if it is in saturation region and you realize nmos current mirror and as many copies of it as you please okay so 
let us say this is w n by l n. If you have the same dimensions and this transistor is in saturation, something has to be connected here. I will just show it as some load. As long as it is in saturation, this current will be I naught and again you can have multiple copies also with different dimensions. So, let us say the width of this is m times w n and the length is l n, then this current will be m times I naught. Okay. So, you just have a bunch of PMOS current mirrors and NMOS current mirrors. Here I started with PMOS, but you could also do the other way around. Okay. And this structure is very commonly seen in every integrated circuit, because you have a number of components. In fact, a very large number of components, where you need these bias currents. Okay. And all these bias currents are generated using transistors. Okay. In all the circuits that you saw, we had uh, transistors biased at a constant current in our amplifiers and control sources, because that was a good way of biasing. Now, you know where the current sources come from. Okay, so if you want a current being pushed into some node, then you use this type of PMOS current source. If you want current pulled out of some node, you use this type of NMOS current source. Okay, so this is part of uh, every chip, and if you start with a single current source I naught, you can get a number of current sources of both polarities, of both pushing in and pulling out. If you want to be very precise about it. This is called a current source because it sources current into a node, and NMOS stuff is called a current sink because it sinks current from a node. But it's quite all right to call both of them current sources. Okay. Now, how do we get this first one over here? Now, there are many techniques to do it, and I won't go into all the details. One possibility is simply to replace this with a resistor of the correct value. Okay. So, that you get I naught, but the problem with that is that as the transistor characteristics change or as the supply voltage changes, the voltage across this will change and the current will change, even if the resistor is very precise. Let us assume that the resistor is very precise, it has to be to define the current accurately, even then as the voltage across it changes, the current will change. Now, that also can be fixed by using a more sophisticated uh, version of this drain feedback biasing. Okay. So, how did we do drain feedback biasing? We had our uh, PMOS transistor, we connected a current source to the drain and we saw that the variation required at the gate is in the same direction as the variation that we see at the drain. So, we fed it back directly, but as I have mentioned before, it does not have to be fed back directly. It could be through any kind of stage which has a positive incremental gain. Okay. After introducing the exact topology, you can analyze and make sure that this is in saturation. Now, one such possibility is an op amp, which in fact we have used for some other types of uh, constant current biasing. So, how do we use an op amp? So, let us say the op amp is here, we can feed back to one of the terminals of the op amp and the other terminal can be connected to some fixed voltage. Let me call it V D 0. Okay. Now, we want a positive incremental gain from the drain to the gate of the transistor. So, this should be the plus terminal and this should be the minus terminal. By the way, you can after looking at this topology, go back and analyze and see what the signs of the op amp should be and you will see that they should be positive. Sometimes, students make this mistake of uh, assuming that wherever the feedback is returning to, that is the negative terminal, but that is completely arbitrary. You do not know how many inversions are taking place inside the feedback loop. So, you have to actually break the loop and analyze the sense of feedback and assign the signs correctly. Okay. So, fine. Now, again uh, the same thing happens as before. If the drain current is different from I naught, the difference will flow into this parasitic capacitor I d minus I naught. If I d is too small, then current will be pulled out of this and this voltage will fall down. As this voltage falls, the gate voltage of the PMOS transistor falls and therefore, the V s g, the source gate voltage will increase, increasing the current. Finally, steady state is reached when I d equals I naught, then obviously, V s g of the PMOS transistor has to be equal to the threshold voltage plus the required overdrive voltage. 
Okay. Now that is fine. That part you know already. But what is so special about this circuit? Because we have an op amp, and let's assume it's an ideal op amp. These two terminals will be virtually shorted because of the negative feedback loop. So this voltage will be exactly equal to V D zero, and it's independent of the supply voltage and transistor parameters and so on. Okay. So now, if you replace this uh, current source with a resistor R not, the current flowing here will be V D not by R not, V D zero by R not. Okay. And so, if this voltage is precisely fixed, then this current is also precisely fixed. Okay, if the voltage and the resistance are precise, the current will be precise. Now, you can use a precision resistor here because it's just one resistor, and with this one resistor, you get accurate current sources all over the chip. Okay, and it turns out that a precision voltage source is also available in uh, IC technologies. There is a circuit I won't go into. It's known as a band gap reference, and its output voltage turns out to be the extrapolated band gap of silicon at zero Kelvin divided by Q. Okay, that's approximately 1.2 volts. You know that the band gap of silicon is around 1.1 volts or so, but that's at room temperature. The extrapolated band gap at zero Kelvin is 1.206 electron volts and the output voltage of this will be equal to that voltage okay and that will be very precise it's independent of temperature and so on okay so that is what is used in a chip to get all these multiple current sources the biasing circuit on a chip could look like this this is the band gap voltage and you have one precisely defined resistor it's either external to the chip or inside the chip and trim to have the correct value and then this voltage will be V G 0 by R 0 and you can replicate the same V S G across many transistors to get copies of the current and you can also get a number of current sinks by using NMOS current mirrors. Okay. And especially with a MOS transistor, because the gate current is zero, there really is no limit to how many transistors you can connect. Okay. So this is how you generate bias currents on a chip. Okay. 